<laughs> oh my goodness, striking golf ball is pretty easy. Um, so the topic of my uh, my post today is difficult, difficult. How hard can it be to hit a little ball sitting absolutely perfectly still on the ground? It's not really that hard. <laughs> if you understand what's really going on when a skillful human being with a golf club hits a golf ball. So here's what's happening. By the time the club head swings, it starts off here, and if we measure it one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, five foot, five by the time it's finished its full course around the golfer, the club head will have moved some 50 feet. Depending upon who's at the end of the club, uh, especially if it's a longer club like a driver, the club head will reach a peak of speed as it gets through impact. If it's a little old lady, maybe 60 miles an hour. If it's Jamie Sadlowski, our uh, Canadian long drive champion, it'll be 145 miles per hour. Now, relative to our straight directional line, let me use a club here so that I can create a sense of line here. So relative to our straight directional line, because the club is not, the golf swing is not a Ferris wheel circle, if it was a Ferris wheel circle, then the club head would never leave the target line and there would be a straight line here. Because the swing is on an incline or tilted plane, that means the club immediately going back will curve to the inside why in the world would you want to put straight parts into a curving golf? You ever heard that one? Swing the club straight back. Why would you want to put straight parts into a curving golf swing? So the club will curve immediately to the inside, go up to the top of the swing, and then it's on a curving arc the entire time, reaching, curving out to reach the impact point, and the sweet spot of the club face will touch the target line just briefly for the tiniest millisecond of time when it makes contact before the club head will then begin curving back to the inside and up and around in the finish. Now while this is happening, the club face, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but I've uh, got my little pointer thing on my club face here. So the club face will start off facing at your target and immediately going back, it will begin to open as it follows the swing's arc. There will be a hinge up here, and then the club will be trailing well behind the hands with the face wide open. And from waist high to waist high, the club face goes from pointing 90 degrees or more in that direction to pointing 90 degrees or more in that direction. And the club face will come around to perfectly square for the tiniest millisecond of time. Now, when the club head comes and impacts the ball, this is, uh, <laughs> this is very interesting. Modern science and high-speed photography has shown that when the club head meets the ball, as the club is going on that continuum of less and less and less and less and less open until it squares at impact and then closes more and more and more as it goes past impact, the reality is impact actually has three phases. The initial phase is where the club head just barely has met the ball. It's about a nanosecond of time. And then, as the force of impact continues, the ball essentially goes from being round to being squished and flattened like an egg on the face. And then, a split second later, the, club, the ball ricochets and rebounds off the face. So there's impact, compression, and then separation. Now, in order for the ball to go straight, a lot of people think, well, the club face has to be squared impact. Uh, but what part of impact? The truth is, when a golf club hits a ball for a golf ball to go straight, at the initial stage of impact, the club face has to be just fractionally open because the club and the ball are gonna be together for approximately a bit more than a half an inch, six, six tenths of an inch. So in that time, as the club meets the ball, it's fractionally open comes to dead square right at the height of compression when the ball is, is squished as far as it's going to be squished. And then as the ball ricochets off the face at separation, the club is already starting to close as it goes past impact. So in reality, at the very start of impact, 
the, on a straight shot, the, ball, the club face is actually just a tiny fraction of a degree open, squares at compression, and then closes going past compression in that six tenths of an inch. But you didn't know that. <laughs> oh, and uh, the other important point. If you want those really nice shots that make golf feel fun, that feel solid, that feel so great, the ones that hooked you on the game in the first place, you have to strike the ball exactly perfectly pinpoint dead on the center. Now, if you strike off center, that's okay. You've got about, oh, an eighth of an inch or so for still really good shots. Quarter of an inch, you kind of know you didn't quite connect solidly. Three eighths of an inch, eh, not bad. Uh, what did I say, quarter? Well, I've lost track of my fraction. Okay, let's begin at the beginning. <laughs> so, dead on the money, perfect. Within a sixteenth of an inch, that's ideal. Uh, dead on the money or within a sixteenth of an inch. And by the way, a sixteenth of an inch is, now this is my, uh, up here in Canada we have a dollar coin. This is my fake uh, sh get my shopping cart without having to dig a coin out of my pocket. Uh, it's a fake loony, as we call the dollar coin up here. So when you turn the loony sideways and look at the thin edge of it, that's the degree of precision or closer required for the really nice ones. Uh, eighth of an inch, okay. Quarter of an inch, not bad. Three eighths of an inch, eh, something's not right. Half an inch, uh, it's not working. Three quarters of an inch. Now we're going to terrible shots. Hmm. <laughs> so, seems simple enough. It's actually not that hard. So, <clears throat> essentially, it's all there is to it. You just swing that club and strike that ball. The interesting thing is, uh, people who are quite skilled at it, like myself, there's that nice, tight, precise impact sound virtually every time. Uh, have you noticed I'm not bothering with the setup and all that other stuff? Oh, now that one I hit a little thin. I think I hit that one about maybe two lines down from the center. Let me correct on the next one here. There, that's right on the money. So you see, it's really quite simple. Now, if you wanted to, see these uh, golf sticks here, they're quite highly engineered for the purpose. If you wanted to, you could just switch to a left-handed club. Kind of do the same thing. I mean, it's not that hard. Of course, now for fun, you could switch to right-handed and turn the club upside down and hit it like that. Oh, that one wasn't quite so solid, but still pretty straight. And of course, if we go back to right-handed, we can turn the right-handed one upside down left-handed and hit it like that. It's a great way of getting out of trouble if you just happen to be right up against a fence and or let's say the fence is here behind you and you can't stand right-handed to hit it because it's too close, so you just turn around, swing left-handed, the club upside down. Now that one I struck it a little bit off the toe of the toe because I'm hitting it with the toe. Let me try that one again, be a little more accurate. Oh, now that one I wasn't. I'm human. So, as you can see, golf balls really. Oh, that time I hit a little fat. Now, do I look embarrassed about that? Nah. That's actually just a learned perception that most people have. The truth is that, uh, boy, that's like right on target. Oh, I hit the 150 sign, which is what I'm aiming at. <laughs> so as you can see, it's really quite simple. All those things that I explained earlier that you can read in the text of the uh, solution video. It's really rather simple. So then the question you're probably wondering is, how come I make it look so simple and everybody else is endlessly struggling to make even decent contact? Well, in my next post, I'm going to explain what I call a tale of two paradigms. 
The one paradigm says that striking golf ball is an unbelievably complex feat of human bioengineering where we have to have the right grip and setup and posture and the exact precise distance of the ball and precise ball positioning. We have to make sure every part of our body looks really similar to whoever the golf teaching gurus have decided is the person with the technically greatest swing in the world. Or maybe there's a reason why Jim Furyk and Bubba Watson can still actually play pretty good golf without even having to worry about all that sort of technical stuff. So if you're intrigued, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun in our next video.